do because they usually would have to qualify or qualify certain you know uh, audit reports and uh, there are certain happenings within organizations that we tend to see people blowing whistles on when we take about the global incidence of whistle blowing edward snowden for instance is classified as one of the whistle blowers edward Assan. there are so many people who have been engaged in such whistle blowing uh, activity and uh, there are some arguments that support whistle blowing and others that do not support whistle blowing for instance one prominent argument is the loyal agent argument the loyal agent argument uh, explained that you know the employer is the employee is supposed to be an agent of the principal an agent of a shareholder so as per the fiduciary duty uh, the employee is supposed to you know work in the interest of the corporation work in the interest of the shareholder so if there is anything going wrong in the company the best that the employee will do is to first protect the interest of the shareholder by not going out there to blow the whistle so invariably they say that the employee has no right to blow any whistle you see their main obligation is for them to act in the interest of the principal who is the shareholder so this argument really speak against whistle blowing and uh, bemoan whistle blowing in the context of every organization however there is also the exit voice and loyalty uh, argument which uh, has been championed by albert hetman in his book called the exit voice and loyalty his argument really is that uh, the loyal agent is the one that protects the interests of the principal the interest of the principal here is to see a certain long term sustainability of his investment and long term profitability of his investment so anything that would tend to derail the long term sustainability and profitability of the organization or the firm may not be in the interest of the principal so the loyal agent is the one who sees these activities that may not uh, in near to the benefits of the organization or to the benefits of the principal and then try to work towards it the loyal agent sees this earlier and then tried to blow the whistle on and make sure that the organization see it ahead of time and then do what it can do to deal with the issue so that the organization or the firm can become profitable into the future you know particularly members of organization can respond to such dissatisfaction either by leaving the organization and speaking up and making the dissatisfaction known in the hope that they will bring that change which will end up making the organization profitable into the future so those who speak up by going out of the organization and blowing the whistle are likely to help the shareholders uh, ensure that uh, any bad behavior any unethical behavior any miscon misconduct is cleared in the firm so to be able to ensure the profitability of the organization so the argument is that look if you cannot if you cannot blow the whistle within the lawyer agent would rather leave the organization and blow the whistle and then you are seen to be the real loyal agent these arguments against you know um uh, whistle blower protection has actually ended up in people you know coming uh, uh, against the incidence of whistle blowing most of them use the argument that employees who blow whistle are likely to do that in protest against a company decision or to get back to their employers for taking certain decision which is unpalatable and which is not in their interest uh, others say that employees who blow whistle may use whistleblowing as a cover-up for their own incompetence simply because 
uh, they would have actually been performing underperforming and instead of them to up their game they would rather cover up their incompetence and inadequacies by blowing whistle which really doesn't you know exist so the argument is legislating to protect whistleblowers may at the end of the day not be in the interest of employers in actual fact they say it might encroach on the uh, right of the employer to do his business as it deems it fit but there are others who seek to support the protection of whistleblowers and uh, these people explain that uh, if people blow the whistle uh, they come you know uh, to terms with certain uh, situation that may endanger them so at least when they are coming out to blow the whistle on certain misconduct that may uh, uh, be uh, dangerous to society that may be dangerous to the public they need to be protected because they may end up being victimized they may end up uh, uh, being you know sought after for uh, one or two uh, things that they have not actually done so there is this moral right generally for free speech and therefore once you speak freely you must be protected this has been the argument for whistleblower protection but hey there are benefits and danger as to whether a company must uh, even think of evolving or instituting a whistleblowing policy um, I, I mean in the banking sector in the financial services sector in the security sector uh, i mean generally we see uh, one firm or the other bringing about certain policies to protect people who blow the whistle but how many people are ready to blow the whistle some of the benefits of whistle blowing uh, policy may end up you know uh, in the fact that companies may learn ahead of time about problems and they would be able to as early as possible take corrective actions before they degenerate into problems that cannot be solved for a company also coming in with or instituting a whistleblowing policy it's see i mean it makes the policy look uh, com com uh should i say committed to uh, good business practices it actually affirms the company's you know good deeds and support for uh, ethical behavior in, in in various business circles the danger of instituting a whistleblowing policy comes when we see whistleblowing encouraging employees to report on each other what is usually referred to as peer reporting so sometimes when you are afraid that somebody may report you you begin to you know feel that you don't have to trust people you don't have to uh, associate with people and the environment is uh, likely to be polluted with intimidation and mistrust so people have actually spoken against whistle blowing because of these dangers that we are likely to witness when we institute them then we move on to trade secrets trade secrets and conflict of interest we'll first take trade secrets trade secrets uh is when information used in uh not when we say trade secrets we we are basically trying to look at the information that people use in conducting businesses now once this information becomes uncommon once this information is no longer a secret it doesn't inure to the benefit of the firm in in his in its competition agenda in strategic management we say that resources that are used in competing uh, to gain competitive advantage needs to have certain characteristics one it should be rare which means that it should be uncommon it should be um what we call valuable so there is the valuability issue there it should be inimitable which means that people should not easily copy it or uh, it should not be easy to uh, duplicate so largely information that is used in conducting business is supposed to meet these characteristics 
so they are supposed to be uncommon the information is supposed to be inimitable which means that it cannot be copied or duplicated and it should have a certain level of value now it will only be valuable it will only be rare it will only be inimitable when it is kept as a secret so an information which is used in conducting businesses must not be known to others must have a certain value and must not be easy to imitate example of such information is ingredients and sometimes chem chemical composition of products especially in the uh, food and beverage sector or it could be a detailed you know uh, manufacturing processes that people use now when it comes to ghana a lot of such uh, uh, information are kept as secret because that is what people use in conducting business come to think of it when you take the distillery or what we call the uh, brewery sector what guinness is doing is to guinness and what for instance uh, 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 a craft brewery is doing is just associated with everybody tries to cover his or her information once you begin to release this information you are likely to be caught up in what we call trade secret theft uh, largely globally there, there has been several issue of espionage and people stealing various um, various uh, information of major businesses and uh, I, I watched the speech of for instance the American president Donald Trump referring to how much they spent or the they spent on protecting trade secrets of major American companies and how much uh, theft of such secrets is costing America. Some of this trade secret could be referred to as the confidential business information, which is usually kept as a secret. For instance, the salary of the most fluid or most versatile you know, employee will be kept as a secret because once somebody knows it, poaching him becomes easier. He only needs to up it a bit and then he will fall for it. So it is very important for us.